Hi, welcome to Acids and Bases Part 1. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about the properties of acids and bases. Specifically, we're going to look at characteristic properties of acids, characteristic properties of bases, what is an indicator, neutralization reactions, and some examples of acids and bases throughout this video. So let's start off by talking about some characteristic properties of acids. Aqueous solutions, remember those are solutions that are water-based, of acids conduct an electric current and are considered electrolytes. Now let's remind ourselves what are electrolytes. Electrolytes are substances that conduct electricity when dissolved in water. The ability of a solution to conduct an electric current is dependent on the concentration of ions, in other words, molarity in solution. Strong acids are good conductors of electricity because they ionize, in other words, they break down into their component ions, their individual ions, very well. And the example that we see down here is hydrogen chloride. When it is dissolved in water, which is why we have water over the arrow right here, it will fully ionize into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Acids react with certain metals to produce hydrogen gas. Now this is totally based on table J of your reference table. So when we write out these examples right here, you're going to say, wow, that looks really familiar. And you're right, it's all about single replacement reactions, where when you look at table J, a metal that is high on table J can replace any metal below it. Specifically, though, we're going to be looking at replacing our standard on table J, which is hydrogen. So magnesium metal reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So magnesium metal can be represented as Mg. Hydrochloric acid is in your reference tables. It is represented as HCl. To produce is an arrow. And then we have magnesium chloride. Now remember, magnesium is Mg plus 2. The chloride ion is Cl minus 1. So when we crisscross this, we're going to get Mg Cl2 and hydrogen gas plus H2. And the key thing to remember here is that hydrogen is a diatomic. So what's going on here? The magnesium is more reactive than the hydrogen according to table J. So the magnesium will come in and kick out the hydrogen. This leaves the hydrogen by itself, but it's very unstable that way. So it's going to hook up as a diatomic. And this hydrogen gas, if it's an open system, will be released out to the surroundings. The other product that we form here is magnesium chloride, which is a neutral compound. Now let's do some practice. Calcium metal reacts with nitric acid to produce calcium nitrate and hydrogen gas. See if you can write out this reaction and then check your work with me. And remember, if you need the formula for nitric acid, it's in your reference tables. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Calcium metal can be represented as Ca reacts with is a plus sign. Nitric acid, according to your reference table, is HNO3. To produce is an arrow. Calcium nitrate. Now again, the, the key thing here that we have to be careful of is making sure that we write out the correct formula. So calcium is plus 2. Nitrate is on table E of your reference tables. So that's NO3 minus 1. We're going to cross these down. So the correct formula here is Ca NO3 2 and then finally again one of the products of a uh, metal reacting with an acid is hydrogen gas so we should be looking for hydrogen gas to be one of our products and if we are really specific here which we should have been up here and I'm going to go back and relabel that we should balance this equation so I have two NO3s over here so I should put a 2 in front right here 1Ca, 1Ca, 2NO3s, 2NO3s, 2 hydrogens, 2 hydrogens over here. Same thing up here, 2Cl, so really there should be a 2 in front of there. And then that also balances out our hydrogens. The key thing here to remember, though, is again, is if you have a reactive metal reacting with hydrogen, it's going to kick the hydrogen out and produce hydrogen gas. And that's a characteristic property of acids. Acids cause acid-base indicators to change colors, and we're going to talk about how to use Table M in more detail in the future. Table M describes common acid-base indicators in your reference table. So we'll see everything from methyl orange to phenolphthalein to brown crustal green and thymol blue. 
and each of these has a pH range, which again we'll talk about in more detail, and then we'll see a color change. And what these color changes can tell us, as we see over here, is whether something is acidic or basic. Ultimately, what we'll learn in the future is that our most acidic, acidic pHs are around zero, and our more basic pHs are around 14. So we can look at common things and say, well, are they acidic or basic? But again, we'll talk about that in the future. Acids react with bases to form water and a chemical salt. This is known as a neutralization reaction. Neutralization reactions are a type of double replacement reactions. So I can look at this one, and this is potassium hydroxide, reacts with sulfuric acid to give me potassium sulfate and water. So I'm looking for a base and an acid, which you'll become more familiar with, some type of ionic compound as a product, which we know any ionic compound is considered a chemical salt, and always water as a product. Now remember, a chemical salt is not just sodium chloride. We think of salt, we think of table salt, we think of sodium chloride. And of course, I put an image of sodium chloride down here because it was just cool looking. But a chemical salt is a neutral ionic compound that is a product of neutralization. So again, you just have to be very aware of this general format. Dilute solutions of acids will have a sour taste. If you've ever had a Sour Patch Kid or any sour type of candy, you know what I'm talking about. The sour taste of oranges and lemons is due to the presence of citric acid. Vinegar contains acetic acid, CH3COOH. We talked about this in organic acid, this Ku group down here. Tannic acid is part of tea, and it's got a pretty intense molecular formula down here, C76H52. O46. And Coke and Pepsi contain phosphoric acid, H3PO4. So all of these things have acids associated with them, not really strong acids, but they do have acids, which gives it that sour or sharp taste. Now let's talk about some characteristic properties of bases. Aqueous solutions of bases will also conduct an electric current. Strong bases are good conductors of electricity because they ionize in other words, break down into their component ions very well. So an example here that we have is sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide can dissolve in water to form sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So like acids, these ionize, they are good conductors of electricity, uh, therefore they are considered electrolytes. Bases will also cause acid-base indicators to change color. So again, when we talk about indicators with acids or bases, we're going to come back to table M and we're gonna be able to see these color changes and be able to classify a compound potentially using this chart right here, using these two charts. Bases react with acids to form water and a chemical salt. Again, these are called neutralization reactions. And we've talked before that these are a type of double replacement reactions. So here's a situation where we have calcium hydroxide, which is our base, reacting with nitric acid, our acid right here, to form a chemical salt of calcium nitrate. And again, water as a product. The other thing that you need to know about bases is that they feel slippery or soapy. A lot of bases are involved in household products or cleaning products. So we see this image over here of shampoo, and shampoo is a basic solution. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We went over the characteristic properties of acids. We talked about the characteristic properties of bases. We looked at what is an indicator, neutralization reactions, and also talked about some different examples of acids and bases. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.